Hello my beautiful friends, it's Amanda here and today we're talking about some new ColourPop products. These come from the Sonic Bloom collection. At the moment, the Sonic Bloom products are an Ulta exclusive. Recently, we've been seeing all of the Ulta exclusives eventually make their way over to the ColourPop site. So do not fear my international friends who do not have access to Ulta. I have a feeling that this collection will eventually be available on the ColourPop site. I don't know for sure, it has not been confirmed, but pretty much all the Ulta exclusives eventually pop up on the site, it's just a matter of when. It seems to me like a lot of these Ulta first collections get released without a lot of fanfare. I, I don't understand why. Maybe even ColourPop themselves can't keep up with ColourPop at this point. There are quite a few products in this collection, but a lot of them are not really new. There are some color sticks, which I didn't even notice when I went to purchase this palette, so I'll put a picture up here. There are a few of the Cheek Do Serum blushes. None of these are new shades. These were all previously released with the initial launch of this product. It looks like they just put them in some special outer packaging, but these are not new shades. There are also several of these, another product that I really, really enjoy. This is the Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain, and the majority of these shades are also not new. However, there is one new shade that's the one I purchased, and it's the one, of course, I'm wearing throughout this video. This is the shade Flower Lust. It's priced at eight US dollars. It has the same shape and size packaging. However, the lid is a slightly different color. It's more of a deeper peachy type of color. The original Fresh Kiss Glossy Lip Stain release has a lighter beigey color. And then of course we have the Sonic Bloom outer packaging. Happens to look amazing. Matching nail game going strong. So there's the shade label on top of the outer carton and then on a sticker on the bottom of the actual product. The applicator is exactly the same as all the others. This very small pointed little detail applicator. No noticeable scent on this formula for me. And I will show you a little lip swatch here. Even though you get to see me wearing throughout the video, this way you can just get a little bit of a close up look at this glossy lip stain in the shade Flower Lust. It's a really pretty rosy pink. I like the shade. I think it works well with the palette. I like the formula a lot. This is one of my top favorite releases of the entire year, so you already know I'm going to be a big fan of this. All right, let's talk about the Sonic Bloom palette. First of all, how pretty is the packaging? The palette is priced at 18 US dollars. First let's take a close-up look at the outer box. We have the exact same artwork on the outer carton and the palette. You can see there's some little shiny details here. This may be my favorite packaging design that they've done all year. Something about it just really draws me in. I like the florals, the kaleidoscope, the colors. It's sort of dark and moody but bright and cheery at the same time. I really Ooh, I really like it. I really like it. On the back, I did check the ingredients list. This does have carmine in the may contain section. So if you are a vegan or somebody who is allergic to carmine, just be aware it is appearing in their may contain list. Just FYI, you can make your own call on that. We do have some eye safety warnings on a few of these shades. Now, none of these shades are pressed glitters but one of the shades here is a shimmer, so this may have the warning because it might contain a PET glitter, which is a cosmetic ingredient, but it's not like a big chunk of pressed glitter that I would worry about an abrasion. And then the other shades are deeper, kind of reddish-based matte, so those are probably pigment warnings. I just recommend patch testing, especially if you're not sure or if you're somebody who has experienced sensitivity to eyeshadow. You know me, I'm a better safe than sorry type of girl. If you want a little bit more information and my thoughts about those types of shades, check the description box. I'll link my ColourPop wine collection video where I talk a little bit more about that. Just if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you want some more info, 
never hurts to know. Now let's take a look at the palette itself. Like I said, same artwork. We are getting some raised shiny details here. Oh, this is so pretty. I really, I really like it a lot. Very similar on the back. We just don't have the full ingredients list here, but we do have the shade names with their little warnings. Thank you, ColourPop, for being transparent with that. This is a heavy duty cardboard palette with a magnetic closure. When we look inside here, there is no mirror. And this is their standard size palette. It's not the extra big pans like Lemoncello and Powerpuff Girls had. This is just their regular average size palette that the majority of their 12 pans are. We see a mix of finishes in here. We do have one matte with glitter. Then we have six true matte shades on the top and bottom here. And then the remaining five shades are shimmers two of which are duochrome shades. The green and blue are duochrome. So especially this one called Verbena, it looks really different across a bunch of different pictures and videos because it has those duochrome pigments. Next, I wanna show you some swatches of the Sonic Bloom palette. I will be showing you both finger and brush swatches. All the swatches are done on the inside of my arm with no primer down first, and I do not use a dampened brush for any of my brush swatches. The finger swatches will be pictured on top of my arm, and then each corresponding brush swatch is pictured directly below. As always, for my brush swatches, I'll be using my e.l.f. flat eyeshadow brush, and I'll clean the brush off in between each shade using my Vera Mona color switch. That way there's no shadow transfer between swatches. So let's take a look at the Sonic Bloom swatches now. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how consistent these shadows are swatching? The finger and brush swatches are almost indistinguishable from one another, and that's across all of these different formulas. We have mattes, we have the glittery mattes, we have shimmers. These are all looking so smooth, so opaque. These were just honestly a joy to swatch and use. Now that you've seen the palette swatched, let's take a look at a quick eyeshadow tutorial. That way you can see these shadows in action for the eye look that I'm wearing today. And then I'll show you some swatch comparisons and I'll wrap up all my thoughts at the end. I'm starting off this look by prepping my eyes just like I always do. First, using my favorite eye base. It's the MAC Paint Pot in the shade Painterly. Then I just went over that with a really light dusting of some setting powder. I used this cool brown shade called Cosmos, and I just gently built that up in the crease area for my transition shade. Then I went in with Dig Deep, and this was so much darker and just way more pigmented on the lid than I even expected, even after swatching it. So I just blended that out a little bit with my finger to get a softer edge on that shade. Then I mix together Cosmos and Lunar Disco to blend that deeper shade up into the crease and just add a little bit more dimension to that transition area. And I also used that combo on my lower lash line. Then I used the shade called Heyday and I put that right on the very inner corner. Lastly, I took Verbena. I put that on a flat brush and then I sprayed the brush with a little bit of my pretty fresh setting spray. That way I could really get that metallic super duochrome look on the lid and I just built that up all over the lid blending from heyday out until I got to dig deep. Then I used dig deep just a little tiny bit on a pencil brush and smudged that along my upper lash line for a more smoky look on the lid. Then I curled my lashes and added my Essence Lash Princess Mascara. And that's my finished look. This is super easy to achieve. The shadows were very easy to blend, layer, and work with. And I think that this is a really fun, interesting, kind of sultry look, but it is technique-wise super duper simple to do. I did ask for suggestions on my Instagram page for which 
palettes you wanted to see this one compared to. So all of the comparisons today were suggested by my friends over on Instagram. If you're not already, I definitely recommend going to follow me on my Instagram page. It's just makeup just for fun. You'll get to see the swatches first. I do a lot of comparisons. I'll take your requests. And I just really appreciate all of your input over there. Let's take a look at a few palette comparisons now. don't think you're gonna be surprised. I really, 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 really like both of these products a lot. I've been wild about the Fresh Kiss formula from the moment that I tried it. It has stayed in my favorites. I loved the Tinkerbell ones. I hope that this formula sticks around for a long time because it's definitely quickly become one of my all-time favorites. I think this color is really cute. I'm not a huge pink lipstick kind of girl and I really really like this one so I think that says a lot. But this palette though. I really 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 like this. It's probably not surprising especially when you see this compared to the Good Sport palette which is one of my all-time favorite palettes ever in the history of eyeshadow palettes. And this is very much like a more toned down version of that color story. It's not quite as bright, has a little bit more neutrals. The way that it's organized is very orderly with the shadows and these little trios and columns. ColourPop has been doing that a lot lately. I really like that method of laying out a palette because I do think it makes it more user friendly, especially in a palette that's not just all neutrals. We've got our little orangey trio, we've got a pinky trio, we've got neutral with a pop of green, and then we've got this really deep color that just looks like a dark brown but has like a purpley color on the eye with this duochrome brown blue. These just make great sense as trios, but obviously you can mix and match to create whatever kind of look you want. You can easily get a few very neutral, very toned down type of eye looks out of this, but you can also really go full color if you want to. I, ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. The only things that I would have changed to make this just like a little, little bit more interesting, just like lean in fully to the color, I would change this peachy, matte with glitter shade into like a white to pink duochrome 
for a great highlight shade, a great inner corner, a great top, or whatever you want to do. And then this standard matte brown. This would have been a great spot for like a green, a darker green or a darker blue matte. But overall, I am a big fan of this palette. Performance wise, it swatches beautifully. It looks great on the eye. The colors are very, very pigmented on the eye. You could probably tell that from my tutorial using the shade Dig Deep. I was a little bit intimidated when I first put it on my lid because it was darker than I even thought that it was going to be. I've had so much fun playing with these colors, doing mixes of neutral and colorful and half neutral, half colorful, which is really my jam type of look. This is a beautiful fall palette. All around, I can see this having a lot of appeal to both neutral lovers and color lovers. They knocked it out of the park with this one. I am keeping my fingers crossed for my international friends that this makes its way to the ColourPop site soon because this is a really, really pretty one. It's a good one. All right, I will stop raving about this Sonic Bloom palette. Now's the time when I want to hear what you think about this release. Are you interested? Have you already picked it up? Are you waiting for it to come to the ColourPop site? I always love to hear what you think about things too, so make sure you leave all your thoughts down in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! For the... No, that's not what I meant to say. Ooh. What? Huh? That didn't make sense. Rewind. It, it, oh. This, for me, I... Mm, ah. That's what we call a loss for words. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> so, what? Did I just do like a Disney Channel moment? <laughs> this swatch brush is my magic wand though. We've been in this together for a long time. Okay, anyway, bloom palette. That's backwards. If, uh, now, I am, have a lot, I, uh, bleh, bleh. Whew. Somebody wanted to see the duochrome shade compared to Melrose. It's not worth doing a comparison for the whole palette because it just doesn't, look that similar, but I will do the duochrome comparison for you. I think the off Melrose one is lighter, but I mean, probably still pretty similar. Let's see. This is for my Instagram friend, whoever asked for this. I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. This is the off Melrose one, and this is the Sonic Bloom one. Oh yeah, so I mean, same vibe, but they're pretty different. The off Melrose one is way lighter. I hope that helps. All right, I gotta run because I got a bunch of stuff I gotta do. I gotta go pick up my kid. I'm gonna have some dinner with some girlfriends here at my house tonight. I'm making butternut squash ravioli. And of course charcuterie, who do you think I am? Um, so I hope you have a lovely day and thanks for watching. And I love each and every one of your beautiful little faces so much. And I'll see you soon, okay? I'll see you soon, bye.